Hi guys, Jesse here, and welcome back to my Young Justice Reaction series. Today we are moving on to Season 1, Episode 10. So last time we had a pretty simple amnesia plotline episode. There was no big major revelations or plot twists, but it was a good, fun, 20 minute episode that I really enjoyed. We got some cute moments between what I'm assuming is going to be our future couples, Wally and Artemis and Megan and Superboy, and the team ended up adopting a giant mechanical ball. So what are plot points that are going to revolve around that? That should be fun whenever that comes up. Other than that, not a lot happened. We now know that Cadmus is apparently shipping things either across the universe or from different dimensions because they're now stealing stuff through portals. But I have no idea what's gonna come of that, so... So, without any more, like, preamble, let's jump into Season 1, Episode 10. This is Kat Grant reporting from Taipei, where the historic peace summit between South Relasia and North Relasia has completely broken down. As a last... <laughs> Last resort, Prime Minister Tseng of South Malaysia and North Malaysia's General Singh Man Lee have agreed to bring in an independent arbitrator. But who is it? Speculation has run from the Secretary General of the United Nations to Superman. But the Man of Steel seems unlikely, as I'm told the arbitrator is due to arrive by car, not cave, at any moment. Good luck, my friend. Apple that out. So why is Red Arrow? That's cool. But why is Red Arrow playing bodyguard? Her design's so cool. Who's in the car? Well, Red Arrow, you're gonna get yourself killed because you think you have to do everything by yourself. Assassination attempt live. Thankfully, no one seems to have been hurt, including our mystery arbitrator, Lex Luthor. I was gonna say it was Lex Luthor. I thought it was gonna be Lex Luthor. My theory: the fact that Lex Luthor is behind the entirety of Cadmus is slowly coming together. What the fuck is Lex Luthor doing here? I know what you are. I don't pretend to be an angel. It just so happens that this time I'm on the side of the angels. Not a fan of that. I should either side trust you because LexCorp is a company founded on peaceful enterprise for all humanity. Cut the act. <laughs> I've got intel that LexCorp shell companies to the sale of weapons in both relations. You're profiting off this war. So what's your angle? War income is pocket change compared to the billions to be made investing in a peaceful, united Malaysia. Which does beg the question, who hired the League? And were you really the target? Or was your death just a convenient way to sabotage the summit? Allow me to hire you to find out. Your money has blood on it, and I'm not here to make a buck. <laughs> so, you'll provide your services, but for free. I can live with that, hero. Now, excuse me. I have a hemisphere to save. Mm, I think he's working with Cadmus, and... Or he is Cadmus, and the League of Assassins is working for Cadmus. So, he, this whole business is so shifty. Jealous much? Do you think the ball likes pets? Guess it's not a Kryptonian thing. You may wish to change before you depart. Oh, I spent hours choosing this outfit. What do you think? Can McGann Maor's pass as an Earth girl now? You're green. Well, just kidding. Meet Megan Morse. What's your new name? My what? I chose the name John Jones for myself, and suggested John Smith for Red Tornado. You could be a John too. Pass. Connor's always been my favorite name. A last name will also be required. Perhaps... Kent. Oh, in memory of Dr. Fate, the late Kent Nelson. 
Uh, oh no! More like. Okay, sure. Guess it'd be in. <laughs> well, Connor Kent, time to change your shirt. Oh, I guess yeah. They don't know who. <laughs> Will this work? Works for me. Wait, shouldn't I be Connor Nelson? They grow up so fast. Oh god, these two going to an actual school. So yeah, Super Boyfriend, I guess, name. Hey, where are your little sidekick friends? They're always fun to play with. Especially our archery girl. I like her. She, they, aren't in my league. And you think you're in mine? Where's Green Arrow when you really need him? I don't. Sure about that? <laughs> Hey, this guy again. He was from the uh, Snake Cult episode. Sportsmaster? Sport something. If only you had help at the moment. Oh my god, he has a flip phone? Uh. Because I'm a professional, I won't kill you. At least not while we're on the job. You wouldn't have this job if not for me. Grow up already. The evening's agenda is to create strife between nations. Not my assassin. Hi, Raz! Master. Raish. Client. Raish al Ghul. So I expect better outcome. Less interference from that boy. Perfect. Yeah, Red Arrow, you're not gonna be able to take on Rachel Ghoul. <laughs> Doesn't even fucking move. How far, what's Rach doing here? What skin does he have in this game? Time to get out of here, buddy. I hear you go by Red Arrow now. <laughs> More like Broken Arrow. That was so bad. Okay. <laughs> this, I have a feeling it's gonna be very cringy. These two trying to pretend to be normal people. That would probably hurt so much if you try to shoulder check Superboy. Okay. Well, that's... Hmm. Not sure how that's how an explosive arrow would work. If it hit water, but sure. It's me. I may you know? possibly be in over my head. Hey, that's what we call growth. The League of Sh That's far enough, Cheshire.
Genau. Kai. Why did you only call one? He doesn't seem to really care what's like at all what's going on. That's really cute. Not bad, lad. Better than your team did a Santa Prisca or Bialya. How did you? Let's just say I have an inside source. Very inside. Oh, yeah, there's a uh, mole on the team. <laughs> You're fucked, buddy. They're all fucking Cadmus. This is Cadmus. Okay, yeah, the whole seize the light thing is totally a Cadmus thing. Cadmus is all about the light. Or what the fuck is the light? I've been so focused on what the fuck Cadmus is, I never even thought what their whole light spiel means. It is good to know that my, one of my very first theories, which was that Lex Luthor had something to do with Cadmus, Seems to be correct. I assume that he was the leader, but who knows. But yeah, one of my first theories was the fact that Lex Luthor was the leader of Cadmus because of Superboy and the fact that whenever there's anything to do with like science and Superman, it's always Lex Luthor. So it's a nice thing to know that my theory on him was correct, at least in some sort of way. You can never fucking trust Lex Luthor with fucking anything though. So yeah, in this episode we got both Lex Luthor and Ra's al Ghul. But we kind of knew that because as soon as they introduced the League of Assassins, I kind of knew Ra's al Ghul was probably going to show up at some point. You can't really have the League of Assassins without Ra's al Ghul. What skin he has in this game, I... From what I know about Ra's al Ghul, usually his goals are like a better world and peace through any means necessary. 
But what that has to do with any of this. Though this episode was a good reminder to me that there is in fact a mole on the team. Or I think they have kind of specified on the team, specifically the Young Justice. But I definitely feel like that's a red herring because they've always said there's someone on the team, on the Young Justice team. So that makes me think either it's not someone on the team or whoever is leaking information isn't doing it willingly. Like, again, it could be something supernatural like mind control or it could be they're unintentionally like being bugged and that's how they're getting information. Because I can't really see anyone on our team proper being the one to be leaking information. But there's no one outside the team that actually knows the inner workings of the Young Justice, besides the Justice League and Red Arrow. Is Red Arrow the mole? But then that means, I feel like Red Arrow could be the mole because he has always had this vendetta against Green Arrow. And he has enough of a connection to the Young Justice League to probably still get information out of them. And he kind of wants to stick it to Green Arrow, so, but I don't know if he would go that far to giving the villains information just to piss off Green Arrow, but also there's a lot of flaws in that, like his character doesn't seem necessarily like the one who would leak information, like he seems to at least have some sort of like sense of honor and at least a little camaraderie with the Young Justice League, so I don't think he would entirely fuck them over like that. On the other side of this episode, away from the assassin intrigue mission, we had Megan and Connor going to school for the first time. And we finally got Superboy's real name, which I kind of already knew. Connell, aka Connor Kent. Obviously, since they're not calling him Connell in this show, that's not kind of where he gets his name from, Con, Connor. More the fact that Megan apparently names him. But yeah, he ends up finally having a name, which is good for him. I love the fact though that the Martian Manhunter says that maybe he should have the last name Kent. So that kind of reference kind of flew over both their heads. Yeah, I don't think anyone would know Superman's secret identity. Maybe Robin would because Batman and Superman kind of have a fairly close relationship and so I feel like out of all the sidekicks, Robin would be the closest to Superman, so maybe he would know. So I have a feeling though that we're going to get a recurring side plot, which is Megan and Connor going to high school. Hey, fun, exactly what I signed up for in this superhero show. Joke aside, it does show them being pretty cute. Those two definitely have to talk about relationship status though, like they almost made out in a desert and now going to high school together and they're being cutesy but they haven't kissed yet and everyone thinks they're dating. And Megan's joined the cheerleading squad, the bumblebees, yay. Whenever that girl was talking about the cheerleading squad, the bumblebees, my first thought was actually not like, oh my god it's a cheerleading squad. My first thought went back to the character bumblebee from the Teen Titans, who was a part of like the Hive or whatever it's called, because there was actually a girl on the cheerleading squad who like looked like that character and had like even the same hairstyle with her hair pulled up into the two buns. And I don't know if that was just like a reference or I'm reading into things too much and maybe just Teen Titans is on the mind because that was my superhero animated show growing up. It was the show that made me love Robin. Also, I know this show is a kid show and it's meant to follow the Young Justice and like how they deal with these problems on their own, but it is so strange to me that every single time that Young Justice deal with these villains, and they're like the big villains from their care, like their superheroes rogues gallery, and yet they're like, no, nah, let's not. Let's not call the Justice League. I know we're dealing like with Lex Luthor here, but I don't think Superman wants anything to do with this. Oh wait, Ra's al Ghul showed up with the League of Assassins? Mm -mm. Shouldn't call Batman. No one ever thinks about actually calling any of the major superheroes. So yeah, that was my reaction to season one, episode 10 of Young Justice, Targets.
Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye.